How are we feeling? How's everybody doing tonight? Good, good. All right. We're very, very fortunate to have so many heroes among us tonight. Um, it's, it's truly an honor and it's a gift and it's a blessing to be among all of you and all of our readers. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce one more newcomer to the fold. In the last years of her degree at Gonzaga University, our next hero discovered an incredible ability. One day, while idly drawing passersby in the park, a cat came to sit before her. He sat so patiently that our hero began to draw, and when she was finished, showed the cat her work. That looks nothing like me, the cat told her. <laughs> before she could recover from her shock, the cat was gone. She soon realized she had been hearing snatches of conversation all around, and always had, though no people were near. She was hearing the talk of cats, dogs, and even lizards. Though she understood only the gist of dog talk, and even less from lizards, she found she was fluent in cat. Despite this language barrier, she heard one thing repeated by every animal she encountered crystal clear, Las Vegas. <laughs> Today, she solves cat crimes in the desert with her trusty sidekicks, Zuzu and Zinnia. Her feline friends call her the Neon Tiger, but we know her as Alice Hastings. Thank you, Tim. You just made all of my dreams come true. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I'll be sharing some newer poems with you today. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, this is called Mother. You must learn to plant an elm that grows into one. You must study water and each season's temperatures. I know you don't care for roses. You burnt the lilacs last spring, but you must keep warm. Please, you must. I'd love to see you dance. You have so many empty vases and sometimes you go to them surprised by the stories you tell and the dirt in your fingernails from clawing for skulls that won't make themselves known, roots that can't fold into houses, and you are my mother. I am afraid of you, your peppered skin, your hair. <clears throat> it's called uh, The Myth of the Earthquakes Continued. Some of us will make it with only broken legs, and those of us who don't will bear a daughter, half dirt, on her father's side, and she will tremble through the stick-thin stubs of leftover trees, bore into the earth searching for us, and dust will clog her stomach, and nothing will stop her, and nothing will find us, and she will have night terrors in the clouds, stick needles in her skin, burn worms in old apartments, tag every city building, and when she can't hold herself, when she screams, we will come, shh, we will sing, you are only rock, little one. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. It was born of uh, both anger and love. Uh, it's called Don't Tell Mama. I wanted to kick his face in for what he did to you. When he crumpled your song and threw it on the floor and made fun of you, I wanted to throw him in the cold, hold his nose to the dirt so he could see what it felt like to be you. He should have been bleeding as you turned bird and ripped steel into a melody of musical ties and dead beetles beating jazz in rebellion, New Orleans and New York holding hands, the crowbar, the shredder, the spoon, your wonderful song. I wanted to make him hear you who are sparrow. I wanted to make him hear you who are pond. I wanted to make him hear you, who make paper of all metal. Uh, this is called the myth of Neera, continued. Neera is the goddess who fell in love with Helios, and this is probably the closest thing to a love poem that I have ever written, so enjoy. <laughs> what I can't understand is the gold. 
sunflowers under incubators, a match in November, and your hand is so warm on my shoulder. I can't help it. I focus so hard on your voice. I swear I created it, but that's nothing compared to you through the trees and the light I use to shatter myself until I am singing, ringing, raining with you. And what I can't understand is the gold that follows to break me in afternoon. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, this is called on an almost dead cockroach eaten by ants. It crawls on tile, a sluggish yak in the middle of a desert. It slows when they come, a softened squash in a geometrically patterned field, the shell withering under their teeth. And for hours, while they eat through its flesh, it lies on its back and waits. Um, this is Song for the Sparrow. It must be her I hear. She is breaking into glass and keeping time with it. She is dripping in cones and done with it as she falters to the garden, forgotten and fine with it. I can't keep track of her. So I stand as nine, eating candy, while these million notes pulse through me, my skin dead and shining and happy to be, calling for her, staring at her feathers and waiting at her openings. We are bursting into blue, and I am blind with it. Thank you.